When you are struggling and you start thinking about giving up, I want you to remember something that my husband and I have talked about since we first started this journey nearly a decade ago. Something that has carried us through every moment in this White House and every moment of our lives. And that is the power of hope. The belief that something better is always possible if you're willing to work for it and fight for it. It is our fundamental belief in the power of hope that has allowed us to rise above the voices of doubt and division, of anger and fear that we have faced in our own lives and in the life of this country. Our hope that if we work hard enough and believe in ourselves, then we can be whatever we dream, regardless of the limitations that others may place on us. The hope that when people see us for who we truly are, maybe, just maybe, they too will be inspired to rise to their best possible selves. Shoot, it's the hope of my folks like my dad. Got up every day, do his job at the city water plant, the hope that one day his kids would go to college and have opportunities he never dreamed of. That's the kind of hope. People told me that I might not be able to, to do well in school. For whatever reason, I was always a good student. I worked hard, but I thought there was some magic <laughs> that happened that made you really, you know, I didn't know that it was just plain old hard work. So there were periods of doubt for sure. I think we all, I have doubts today. <laughs> doubts don't go away. You just learn how to deal with them. You, you start knowing yourself and you become more confident. The more successes you have, the more chances you take. You don't let the, the failures or the stumbles define you. Everybody falls every now and then. Some people fall a lot. And what I realize is that we have long lives if we're healthy and we do what we're supposed to do. Think about life as a long trajectory, but at the same time, you don't wanna make huge mistakes because when you're young, Making big, big mistakes can last forever, right? So you want to choose wisely. But the stumbles, the lessons learned, that's part of life that, that makes you grow. But I, I came to know that. I didn't know that when I was your age. I thought every, every mistake was the end of the world. I'll never be able, I'll never get into school. I'll never be, you know, of course, we all feel that way. But just continue to work, put the, put the effort in. And I think that has been some of what's helped me being first lady. First, first of all is knowing who you are and being confident in yourself because there'll be, Clarissa, what do you, do you say? Pushing beyond other people's labels of you, right? That's a big part. That's what we do to each other all the time. We don't even know each other and we already determine from one glance meeting, one line, one word, one phrase, this is who you are. So you have to know who you are before that. <laughs> and you live that reality and you keep living it out no matter what. And if you have good character and good intentions, that ultimately shines through. But in the end, it's hard work. And I'd like to work hard and I'd, I'd like to do good things. And you practice that now. And believe it or not, I didn't know it. It prepared me to be the first lady of the United States. I didn't know. I guess I'm doing okay. But you know what? <laughs> Every day we just get up and keep doing what we think is the right thing. You know, you don't wake up one morning and you're suddenly who you think you want to be. You have to put some energy into it. So if you want to be an honest person, you have to be an honest person every day even starting at three and four and five, right? If you're gonna be a hard worker, hard work doesn't just appear. You have to practice hard work. Uh, you have to practice effort. And I also encourage them, try to help them understand that 
good things don't come easy. You know, with that effort, you know, that's where you grow. That's where growth is. Some of the best times in my life when I've grown, it's when I've done something hard, when I've overcome a fear. You don't realize that when you're doing it, but when you come out on the other side, you realize, wow, I've really stepped up. Our first job in life is get to know ourselves. And I think a lot of times we don't do that. <laughs> We spend our time pleasing, satisfying, looking out into the world to define who we are. Listening to the messages, the images, the limited definitions that people have of who we are. And that's true for women of color. For sure, there is a limited box that we are put in. And if we live by that limited definition, we miss out on a lot of who we are. But it, it takes taking the time to know who you are to be able to deal with the onslaught of negative messages that you're bound to get. So for me, I came into this with a pretty clear sense of myself. And some of that comes with age, some of that comes with experience, some, some of that comes from being fortunate enough to have been raised by a loving mother, strong, focused, and a father who loved me dearly. So I fortunately came into this situation <laughs> with a really clear sense of who I was. So when you hear the smack talking from outside the world, it's easy to sort of brush that off because I know who I am. And I think we have to invest that time in getting to understand who we are and liking who we are. Because I like me. I've liked me for a very long time. <laughs> so. And we like, we all like ourselves out here, but you gotta work to get to that place. And if you're going out into the world as a professional and you don't know who you are, you don't know what you want, you don't know how much you're worth, then you have to be brave. And then you have to count on the kindness and goodness of others to bestow that goodness on you when you should be working to get it on your own because you deserve it. I, I think it's different for everyone. And I can't say that I, you know, I've, I've loved myself for a long time, but there was a journey to get there. And, you know, some of it starts as a young girl when you, you know, confront your fir first bully, the first time somebody calls you out your name, as we would say, you know, the first disappointments and failures that you have. How do you deal with that? What support systems do you set up for yourself? Surround yourself with goodness. I learned early on how to get the haters out of my life, you know? You gotta just sort of surround yourself with people who uplift you, who hold you up. And well, I was lucky I had parents who held me up. But if you don't have that parent, that mother, that father, then you gotta find it. You gotta find those people because they're out there. I tell my mentees all of this, there is somebody out there who loves you and who is waiting to love you. <laughs> and you just have to find them, and that means you have to make room for them. And if you're surrounded by a bunch of low-life folks who aren't supporting you, then there is no room for the people who do love you. Read, write, read, read. If the president were here, one of his greatest strengths is reading. That's one of the reasons why he's a good communicator, why he's such a good writer. He's a voracious reader. So we're trying to get our girls, no matter what, to just be, to love reading and to challenge themselves with what they read, not just read the gossip books, but to uh, push themselves beyond and do things that maybe they wouldn't do. So I would encourage you all to, to read, 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 just keep reading. And writing is another skill, it's practice, it's practice. The more you write, the better you get. Our kids are learning. The first draft means nothing. You're gonna do seven, 10 drafts. That's writing. It's not failure. It's not, not the teacher not liking you because it's all marked up in red. You know, when you get to be a good writer, you mark your own stuff in red and you rewrite and you rewrite and you rewrite. That's what writing is. And if you come out with those skills and then you're confident and you can articulate and you can stand up straight and look anybody in the eye and say, this is who I am, it's a pleasure to meet you. Standing tall, asking questions, using your voice, you have to practice that. 
These arenas just show up again and again, and then you just get used to it. The nerves go away, and you start relaxing into your own abilities. But it's practice. 